I think the idea, the idea was kind of inspired by true life incidents. You know, I was in a room with, with a friend at the time and, and yeah, she, she was a dancer and she was very, she, she, she's very fierce looking, kind of, a look has a lot of attitude and I was impressed with what I was seeing. So I was, I was taking pictures and she was dancing and I was taking pictures and I thought, I think I can explore this, this idea and try to make a film with, the two, with two characters in the room and we play with photography, we play with lighting, we play with dancing. And I pitched the idea to my brother who's a writer and, and he thought, wow, I think we can explore this further. And maybe what, what if we set this in a photography studio? I think it was 2016 when um, my brother uh, approached me that we should work on, from, we should work on a short story, a short film. We, we, we decided not to tell a straightforward story. But it's, uh, at the heart of it, it's just a simple narrative. It's, uh, it's a man going through a dark phase and is on the verge of suicide. And he meets a girl, a mysterious girl who has killed someone and is on the run. So we see these two people with uh, really uh, strong and personal issues moving together by you know, some inexplicable force in the meet. And they spend the longest 12 hours of their lives in the, in, in the photographic studio. It's, it's an amazing script. Like you're gripped from the, from the first paragraph, you're gripped. And the whole storyline, the way everything unfolds, is just so intense. It's like um, it's a thriller mixed with suspense, mixed with a little bit of romance. Like there's blood, there's 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 guns. There's a, there's a, there's an intensity to the whole to the script itself. It's very descriptive. You know, it, des it describes every moment. It gives you the feel of the film. You know, so I think all those elements, you know, were just embedded in me. Like while I was reading, like I was watching the film already. I was feeling, you know, who the character was, how he touches his glasses, you know, the way he smokes a cigarette. Yeah. I, I kind of needed actors who, who could smoke convincingly, who could, who, could, who could endure that pressure because these characters are very intense characters with a lot of um, mannerism, nuances, there's a lot of, you know, tension in the atmosphere. So I needed characters that had presence on screen without even saying anything. So it took me quite a while to get the character for that role, especially the female character. I had a um, little bit of... Um, you know, challenges trying to cast, convince the actresses to, to play that role because the, the, the lead character had a certain nuance, a certain mannerism that she portrayed because of her backstory. So I needed it to be very real. I didn't want to compromise that. Sydney boy be tilting down as she's doing that. Yeah. Be tilting down as she's doing that. Good. This is good. So we're going to do the part now, right? Where you turn around and see somebody has called you. Right? Okay, cut. Character himself is very, is very unique, you know. Um, more, he's, he's more like, he's, he's more like a very artistic artist, you know, very, seems like an avant-garde-ish type of artist, you know. And even the way he go, he went about to costume the character, you know, it just, it just gives you a feel or an identity of the kind of person he is, you know. This role was very challenging for me because it's the complete opposite to who I am. Like I'm nothing like Jamila in real life. Um, I'm actually quite not shy, but quite reserved. But Jamila is very. She's dangerous. <laughs> she's very, very dangerous, and um, she's been through a lot in her life. So you can kind of see, she kind of takes you on her journey as the story unfolds. You get to find out le like deeper, deeper layers of Jamila. And over time, during the, the pre-production process, uh, you know, and when we started, you know, 
getting these characters to meet themselves. I was really very happy I casted these guys together because you know they they brought in everything. They brought in everything. There was there was there was so many you know it was very convincing. There was so many truth in in, in the deliverance you know. And yeah, I was glad both of them won the award at the first Confederate King Short Film Festival. This. The, the most remarkable thing about the way the director approached it is uh, that um, the, the, the style that was uh, envisioned on page was uh, successfully transcended on screen. I think that's what very remarkable about the story, because both characters are very, very strong and they had and strong things to say. So we found a way to um, play some kind of um, uh, emotional ping pong with each character. So when, when they talk, it's just like they're waltzing instead of just talking. So it's, it's, a, it's a dance. And the dialogue, uh, they, they actually did very, very well with that because that was the internal outcome. I was blessed with a, with a good team, both administrative and technical, you know, because from the onset I got um, Yetindo Ogunikwe, who doubled as a production manager and a line producer for the film, and she was an amazing partner. She, I wouldn't have been able to shoot this film if not Yetunde. Having two characters in one room, for about 95 to 98% of the film, then the set must be really appealing. I got a co-production designer, Paul Gaius, who, you know, who helped me in, in, in bringing these characters, especially the, 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 the male character, Jonas. If you see, the production design of the film, it comes in layers, the outside, the, the exterior, where we had to play with a lot of rain, we we'll play with a lot of lightning effects and the design, you know, it was, it was quite hectic. We had to create the rain, we had to create the, you know, we had to create the, the, the lightning effects, you know. Postages, postages was, 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 was a major reference for me. I, 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 I like the way they play with, 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 the, with the lightning effects and stuff. So I listened to a lot of podcasts about how they made that film and I discussed with my gaffer, Mr. Samson who now suggested we get a, a, a 2.5k flood light and yeah and, and he, he thought that could work for the kind of budget we had and how we created the rain machine we it was very organically you know made we we got sprinklers to position in front of the camera it was it was quite hectic then we had the we had the um the studio itself the the jonas office you know we 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 needed to give life to that to that space in terms of you could smell it, you could feel some sort of loneliness, you could feel some sort of um, you know artistic nuances, ambience. The ambience has that that look. Depressing. What is your work? It's so sad. You think so? Mm hmm. What do you know about sadness? Nothing. And I was looking for a, a very avant garde kind of photographer. And I got um, my friend Monochrome Lagos, who we use all his pictures as a as some sort of um, a backdrop for the photographer's work. And he was also the steel photographer, BTS photographer, and, and I think he did an amazing job with the visuals. Then working on the dark room itself, uh, we were limited with um, one space and um, budget to get those dark room equipment. So we had to improvise, we had to be creative. So yeah, I, I, had, I had a good set of technical team and I could shoot and direct at the same time I had to get a, a camera operator, Cine Boy, who I think did an amazing job in that department. You know, he was very, very creative with his improvisation. And yeah, I must give I must give some, some good credit to him. I, I, I liked I liked the way he composed the, the pictures and yeah, try to, 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 to keep that dance fluid. Action. Yes. Have we gone shopping?
flash. The, the themes might be strong, but uh, in the end, we're just trying to tell a simple story about uh, how a man will um, react in a, when he finds himself in a particular situation, which uh, this character did disastrously. But on the other hand, it's, um, it's, it's the same kind of um, situation on an emotional scale that most women actually go through every day of their lives. You know, it's remarkable how they are able to. Uh, carry themselves and survive through social, emotional and physical strains. Uh, it's, it's really uh, a very militant stance of um, feminism. It's a battle cry. <laughs> it just took things to a very uh, 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 daring level. You see, above all, there's something that I really love about the process. It's, it's, there's nothing as interesting when you see an idea you've conceptualized coming into reality and having a great team to help you put that together. I think, I think that was, that was surreal for me and I'm forever grateful for that opportunity.